Welcome to day two of Gator Manufacturing Manufacturing Technology Careers of Tomorrow webinar series. Today's topic is prototypes and protocell innovation and use. Gator Machining and Manufacturing is a provider of parts for the aerospace and defense industries. What does that mean? It means we make parts for planes and that go into military uh, applications. I want to play a quick video for you on millennials' thoughts on manufacturing. You might recognize some of these thoughts because you may have them too. I think, um, what is manufacturing? I, I, I don't know anything about manufacturing. I hear the word manufacturing. I guess the first thing that comes to mind is like factories, assembly lines, uh, and resorts. Creating products from raw materials. Production of goods uh, by a company for a consumer. Lifts and all kinds of just machines, all kinds of going all at the same time. We're pulling more down to integration, uh, England, industrialization. Yeah. 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 Making good. How do we focus with the uh, industry and mass production, corporate slogan? You know, everything we see and use. Do you consider manufacturing important to the U.S. economy? Yes. Yeah. We built ourselves as a manufacturing economy um, after the Civil War. Yeah, yeah exactly. absolutely. Yeah. We'll create things and we just don't need that. Products, I mean, keep it going. How many people are employed? Millennials' thoughts on manufacturing really differ from the reality. We talked a little bit yesterday about manufacturing across the state of Iowa and the impact on Iowa's economy. Today, I'm going to share with you a little bit of manufacturing by the numbers as far as job creation in the state of Iowa. Iowa factories have added 6,900 jobs since 2010, a gain of 3.4%. In the next year, there is a projected shortage of 6,672 skilled workers in the advanced manufacturing sector. This impacts not only Gator, but also other manufacturing facilities in the area. You've probably heard that Tyson is expanding, East Penn is expanding, and a number of other manufacturers are look, all looking to come to the state of Iowa. All of these manufacturers will need workers. And that's where career growth comes in. Career growth across the advanced manufacturing sector has increased in all of these areas. 3% in manufacturing technology. 
8% in tool and die. 11% in industrial maintenance, 14% in welding, 16% in industrial automation, 17% in machining, 19% in transportation and logistics, and 23% in CNC machining. All of these careers are available to get degrees at two-year colleges such as Hawkeye or Kirkwood or even NICC. Next, I would like to introduce Derek Nading. Derek is a programming engineer and an Oline High School graduate of 2009 to talk a little bit about programming. My name is Derek Nading. I am a programming engineer here at GMM. I first got in interested in manufacturing in high school while I was attending some engineering classes. From there, I decided I was going to go to Hawkeye Community College for CNC machine technology. I ended up getting hired at GMM during my second semester of college as a part-time machinist in protocell in the production department. It really put me at the top of my class having the work experience I gathered here at GMM. After I graduated from Hawkeye with my associate's degree in CNC machine technology, I went full-time at GMM. That's when I got the opportunity to learn programming. While I was learning how to program, I worked a split shift, programming during the office hours and machining at night. I learned a lot in both areas during this time. After working the split for just over a year, I was given the opportunity to transfer to the horizontal milling centers where I learned to prove out and run new parts. After working in the HMC department for just over eight months, I was given the opportunity to transfer into a full-time programmer. Not long after starting programming full-time, I was trained to program fourth axis work. Parts that require fourth axis are either more complex than the average part, or the quantities are much higher than the normal part that runs through GMM. One huge advantage of working at GMM is their tuition reimbursement program. I'm going back to school for my bachelor's degree in business management. In the future, I see myself continuing to grow at GMM by learning new things and accepting new responsibilities. The question often asked is, why do we program in the office and not at the machine? I would say the biggest reason we program in the office and not at the machine is due to the complexity of the parts that we see here at GMM. A lot of parts we see here are electrical chassis and lids and can be very detailed. In conversational programming, in other words, programming at the machine, we are limited to certain CAN cycles the machines offer. It doesn't always generate the most efficient tool pass. In CAM programming, we have a lot more control over tool paths and will generate more efficient tool paths than we would if we were to program at the machine. In CAM programming, we are able to, we are able to utilize high-speed machining, which gives us a higher metal removal rate than traditional pocket tool paths. This has been a huge leap forward for GMM. Machine time is expensive for our customers, so the faster we can machine parts, the more money we can save our customers. d modeling most of the time our customers supply us with 3d model in a blueprint of the part that they ordered if they do not supply us with a 3d model we have the ability to create it here at gmm as long as they're fully dimensioned prints from there we import 3d models into mastercam where we will then create the tool paths necessary to machine the part. We're constantly working off of two monitors. One has the model, which we can move and move around and rotate to create the geometry needed for the tool paths. The example I have here took over 40 hours to program due to the complexity and the size of the part. As a programmer, I am always looking for the most efficient way to produce a quality part. 
On the other monitor is the level manager and toolpath manager. A level manager is basically to keep the CAM file clean and organized. It allows us to only have certain pieces of geometry and solid models visible while we're creating toolpaths. The toolpath manager is where the toolpaths are stored. We are able to access and adjust any parameters needed to create a quality program. After we're done toolpathing, we run our program through Verify. Here we are able to verify our toolpaths and make sure no collisions occur. I'm going to let this play for a little bit so you can kind of see the toolpaths used to machine this part. After we're done master cam, uh, we generate the NC code, which is the actual code that the CNC machines read. We then use a different software called Vericut to verify the NC code. Vericut is basically a virtual machine simulator from the actual machines we have on the shop floor. Vericut is used to prevent machine crashes and reduce cutting tool wear. In Vericut, we are able to assemble any fixturing used to machine the part. We are able to verify that tool holders and tool reaches that we have on our setup sheets are correct and not going to cause a crash. The example here is of a part that runs on our FMS. The spindle shown here is around $40,000 to replace. This is why it is crucial that we have everything proven out in Vericut before we send programs to the shop floor. Next, I'm going to show you a video of a actual five axis machine and Vericut next side by side so that you can kind of get an idea of what I'm talking about here. There you see the NC code going through the screen there. Thanks, Derek. Next, we'll have Jordan Rosmus, who is our machining supervisor and a Waterloo West graduate from 2011, talk about cortisol and using CNC machining equipment. My career path. <clears throat> uh, in high school, I wanted to be a mechanic. Uh, my senior year, my dad, as well as Brent Blythe, who is actually a instructor at Hawkeye Community College, talked to me about looking into the manufacturing field. Uh, I learned a lot of skills used in mechanics are also used in manufacturing. 
following graduation, I attended Hawkeye Community College for tool and die and advanced manufacturing, at which time I also started working at Gator Machining. Uh, in February 2012, I started here part-time, taking advantage of tuition reimbursement. And in 2013, I went full-time uh, as a setup guy on the FMS. Uh, in 2014, I was promoted to a team leader. Uh, my most recent milestones in my career uh, is becoming a machining supervisor and also going back to school for business management at Upper Iowa University. So ProtoCell, I started part-time in ProtoCell. A lot of people ask, what is ProtoCell? Uh, basically, these guys are highly skilled machinists that have the ability to set up their own tooling, set up their own fixturing, identify how they want to run these parts as well as adjust their programs at the machines. Uh, their typical order quantities are one to 10 pieces. So as you can imagine, you're heavily involved in setups. Uh, <clears throat> A lot of people ask why we call it protocell. Generally, the work that grows across this cell in particular is prototypes. Our customers use prototypes to verify that the part is gonna basically operate the way that it is designed before they start a production order. Inside a CNC machine. Basically what this CNC machine is doing is it's using cutting tools such as drills, end mills, countersinks, to essentially remove material and make that part the correct shape or fashion that the customer requires. Uh, the white stuff spraying on the tool, as you can see, is called coolant. Essentially what that does is lubricates the, the cutting surfaces, kind of like a oil in your car. It also disperses the heat away from the aluminum so that your workpiece maintains a consistent temperature. Setting up for a run. When I went full time, I was a setup guy. Essentially what you do is you take and use the programming uh, NC codes and you make all your fixturing. At which time it is up to us to identify any possible flaws in our process. As you can see, the operator here is verifying that his part is against a fixture and using clamps to hold it down. So there's a lot of responsibility on him to basically verify that everything is correct before he ever sends that part into a machine. Jordan, can you talk about those computer screens that are off to the right hand side a little bit? This cell is actually called an FMS. It's a flexible machining system. What it is, is basically instead of a standalone machine, this is a rail system. So where this person is standing is actually a load and unload station. The computer to your left actually drives everything that happens on this rail. It's all automated. There's 48 pallets that can go to any machine at any time. And there's a rail car that drives back and forth and picks them up and delivers them to the machines and or load stations. So when a part's done machining, you essentially have no, no downtime in between pallet changes. Horizontal and vertical CNC machines. What is the difference? A, a horizontal machine, uh, the spindle is going left and right. You'll see a video coming up here. Uh, biggest benefit behind a horizontal is you're, you're, you have a fourth axis. So if you have side operations or angles, you never have to remove that workpiece to actually machine them. The machine will go back to home and rotate for you. A vertical is exactly what it sounds like. The spindle is straight up and down. Uh, our vertical machines here are only three axis. You did see a five axis machine running earlier. This is a three axis, so essentially it'll only go left and right, back and forth and up and down. Here's a video of a fourth axis machine running and you'll see its abilities to go back and rotate.
this enables us to machine parts more effect efficiently in the aspect that we don't actually have to remove the part. Uh, the more hands-on that it is, the more time you have invested into that product. With a fourth axis, you can essentially take a job that may take seven or eight setups and make it a two operation uh, job. This is a vertical, as I stated before, it can move left and right and up and down and back and forth, but you're limited. If you have any holes in, on a side, for example, you have to basically have a, a whole other setup to put those machine nails in. Jordan, there's a lot of chips that are flying out there. Can you talk a little bit about what happens to all of those chips and how much of a blank is taken away? This part in particular, you're not removing a lot of material. On the front of all these machines, there's a chip auger that your coolant is going to flush all your chips to the front of the machine, and there's an auger that will carry them all out. Uh, some parts you may, for example, a part like this, we, we would have scrap for maybe a couple pounds. Uh, some of the bigger parts, as you've seen in the previous video, that part actually starts out at 120 pounds. And when it's finished machining, it actually weighs right around 12 pounds. So you can imagine, you know, you're removing 100 and some pounds of material. And that part actually runs for two and a half hours. This is the FMS rail system. Uh, I kind of touched on it a little bit before. This is a 48 pallet uh, high rise system. So there's a pallet on the top and bottom all the way down the left hand side. And on the right hand side are three NC machines. So it'll, it'll take the pallets back and forth to the machines, which enables us to run lights out. Biggest benefit behind it is on weekends, for example, we're staffed 12 hours a day and these machines never stop running. As soon as the parts are done, it'll simply pick it up and take it back to its home stock position and take and deliver another pallet to it. All these machines on that system have tool hives. Uh, your typical NC machine is gonna have tool capacity anywhere from 10 to, I'm gonna say 40 or 50 tools. These tools all have, or these machines all have capacity for 330 tools, which enables us to have the tooling inside the machines at all times for, you know, several hundred jobs. Thanks to Derek and Jordan for sharing a little bit about their everyday jobs here at Gator. Um, as far as career paths, both of these individuals had backgrounds in um, two-year degrees in CNC machining and um, but as they they've already shared with you that their options beyond that have are really unlimited so they've been able to go into programming they've been able to go into leadership positions and really um, grow themselves and their um, their experiences into um, a true career the other thing that's really interesting is how much technology is involved in that CNC area. Not only is there programming to do, but all of our operators work on computer systems. Our blueprints are all computerized and all of everything that we do is really technology focused. Today, um, if you are a teacher, please take out your invitation and on the tail of your plane is a classroom code. With that classroom code you are eligible to receive a $100 gift card to the uh, to your choice of your choice to help support your program. 
Today's classroom code is 3029. And if you have classroom code 3029, please send an email to studentoutreach at gator.com so, so you can claim your prize and you'll get that $100 gift card of your choice. Thank you for joining us today. Tomorrow we have day three of our Manufacturing Technology Careers of Tomorrow webinar series, Quality the Buck Stops Here. Andy Rice, the Quality Manager, who was an Independence graduate of 2007, will be doing our discussion and sharing a little bit about what quality looks like. Thank you for joining us and we hope you have a great day.